Welcome to the Endless Highway, Connecticut music at home and on the road at the HAN Network. My name is Rich Petchkovsky, I'll be your host, and today we're going to interview Barbara Schiller, who is the current president of CT Folk. Uh, we'll be talking about the uh, Connecticut Folk Festival, the history of the festival, and all the things that surround it. Um, good afternoon, Barbara, it's good to see you. And uh, before we get started, um, I know uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to tell the audience, um, in your words, what folk music is. Folk music has always been music of the people. People have always written songs to deal with whatever social issues are happening in their lives. And folk music has always been something that unites people. So if you were to ask Pete Seeger to sing, he would say, sing with me because folk music is about sharing and about singing together about the current issues. In today's world, the term folk music embraces everything from singer-songwriter to bluegrass to blues to Americana to roots. There's, there's really no one tight definition of it. So we consider ourselves to be very, very inclusive at CT Folk. It's a huge melting pot. Yes, it is. Okay, okay so, so let's talk about the festival. Um, um, the festival started in 1989. Since the 80s, Edgerton Park had been used for a variety of things. And Nancy Alderman, who is now the president of Environment and Human Health, wanted to raise some money for the Rail to Trail project. And so a decision was made with Nancy and some other community activists that maybe having a musical event could raise money for that. And so they started doing music in the park. And so the first festival as we know it now did start in 1989. And over the years, it's been everybody from Judy Collins to Emmy Lou Harris to Peter Yarrow, Arlo Guthrie, and some other big names along the way. Um, at this point, the festival now incorporates a green expo, an 80 vendor green expo. We have always been an environmentally conscious organization. Well, there, there was an interesting story that you, that you told us yesterday um, when we were talking at your house about how at one point the festival sort of waned and how they brought it back. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, James and Jane Van Pelt live in the neighborhood near Edgerton Park, which is sort of on Whitney Avenue in, in New Haven. And many years ago, there had been a terrible and still unsolved murder of a Yale graduate student, Suzanne Joven. And they were very concerned about all the negative press around their neighborhood and they thought what can we do to get things positive here again and because she was a Yale student they connected with some people at Yale and they got the festival up and running again in 1994 I believe and it has gone on in one form or another ever since. The last few years have been non-ticketed and that has also changed the way the festival feels to people, I think. It's a free festival. People can come in. There's a big children's area. There's a contra dance. Um, we try to embrace lots of different things. And people learn about all kinds of environmental things from all of the different booths that are part of the Green Expo. So has the ticketed, uh, it was a ticketed event, I mean, have the artists changed because it's a non-ticketed event? Well, they had to. I mean, for a non-ticketed event, we, we are a non-profit. We do fundraising. We look for donors and sponsors. Um, but we can't afford the big names that once brought people in. Our motto now is great music all day, and there really is great That's music all day. I like that. That's a good motto. And I see you have a, you have a poster from the very first one in 89. Yeah. It was the Eli Whitney Folk Festival. It was the Eli Whitney Folk Festival. It's gone through various iterations. It was the Eli Whitney Folk Festival, the New Haven Folk Festival, and now it's the Connecticut Folk Festival and Green Expo. But this one was 89. Um, I have one here from 91, which featured Tom Rush. It's amazing that these things still exist, that we have them. But you can see the graphics are wonderful, and it, it sort of incorporates everything that makes up the festival. Um, this one is from one year when we had Judy Collins and interestingly Railroad Earth, which was a very yeah, interesting pairing. Um, and that one actually had to be indoors. You know, one of the things that happens when you do an outdoor festival 
is you are at the mercy of the weather. And it's one of the reasons we switched from non-ticketed, because when you have an outdoor festival, people wait till the last minute to see what the weather is before buying their tickets. So we took care of that by, by going non-ticketed and hoping that people will trust us that we're bringing in really good music and we're trying to be very inclusive with that. Well, it, is a, it is a great festival. Um, do you, wanna, yeah, you were telling me a story yesterday about Odetta. Do you want to tell that story? So when James and Jane Van Pelt were trying to get things going, there were also all, all these civil rights issues happening, and they thought if they could bring in a minority singer, and Odetta was the first person they thought of, and there was a freedom march as part of that um, with Odetta. So over the years, um, the focus has changed. You know, we don't sort of go in that direction so much anymore, but we try to include everybody. And you've, ha and you've had some really big names. You, you want to tell the audience, like, some of the big names that you've had over the years? Judy Collins, Tom Rush, Steve Earle, um, Peter Yarrow, Arlo Guthrie, um, Tom Paxton, Sweet Honey in the Rock, uh, Dar Williams, John Gorka. Um, more recently, we've had people like Brother's Son, Daryl Scott, and that was an interesting festival. Bruce Coburn. Bruce Coburn. The Brother's Son people didn't know who Daryl Scott was. The Daryl Scott people didn't know who Brother's Son was. And we did that again last year when we had um, John Gorka, who were really appealed to the real folkies, and Della May, who are more of a bluegrass group and we're just trying to bring everybody in great okay uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to uh, come back and talk about the present day festival and some of the things that uh, work around that we'll be right back Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Okay, we're back. This is the Endless Highway, Connecticut Music at Home and on the Road on the HAN Network. And uh, joining us now is Frank Pergola, who's also on the board of CT Folk. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about the uh, singer-songwriter contest that is part of... Uh, the festival, and uh, I'll give it, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Well, we have a, um, every year we have at the festival a songwriting contest for emerging artists, um, really for any writer at all. And what that involves is 
for the two or three months before the festival, there are submissions. And there is a five-person panel who will listen to these submissions. And um, it's a serious should I be panel. looking somewhere special here? You're just having a conversation. You're having a conversation. Yeah. And um, at the end of the submission period, we sit down and we have a uh, little battle over, five of us sit down and have a little battle over snacks and tea and mm -hmm. coffee and whatnot, and we decide who is going to be the five winners um, for the festival. Those five winners have a spot at the festival at, at Edgerton Park. And they're judged again, right? They're, they're actually the they're, finalists. They're yeah, the finalists. finalists yeah. The finalists. And um, they're judged by a separate um, five-person panel, of which Rich was a part of last year. And uh, they had 10 minutes apiece at the festival, and they get to present their material. And they are, you know, sometimes judging is too harsh a word, but one person is picked, and that person will have a guaranteed spot at the following year's festival, a performance spot. And it's, it's interesting when you hear the different um, styles of writing, you get all ages, um, you get solo artists, you get trios, you get duos, uh, and um, it's part of the general philosophy of the, of the festival itself in the sense that, you know, if folk music is music of the people, well, this is music coming from the people, and I, oh, it's a little bit of work, but uh, I enjoy, it's a, lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, but I enjoy, uh, you know, working with the process of picking the songs. And then besides that, which Barbara can probably help me more on this, we have a performance. We have the audition tonight, which is coming up next month. What's the, it was April 5th? April 1st. April 1st. And that's, that's a whole separate event. I'd just like to add something about the songwriting competition, which is that people come from all over the country to do this. Yes. Last year's winners were from Nova Scotia. Before that, it was Patty Mills from Maine. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had people come from Washington State, and it's also very prestigious for the winners. It's something that they can um, put on their website, on their literature. They were the winners of the Connecticut Folk Festival Songwriting Competition, and it's really been a jumping off point for some of the past winners like Hannah and Maggie and the Levins. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great thing that we're doing when people enjoy it. Auditions Night is a separate process where people send in videos of a song and we have another <laughs> committee of volunteers from the board that listens and looks at those videos and selects 10 people to come and perform live. Um, and we call this our auditions night. It will be April 1st this year. And the audience actually has feedback sheets. April Fool's Day. Yeah, well, we're not going to say that. Um, <laughs> but the audience actually has a feedback sheet and will select their top three. And the board makes the final decision, but in the years I've been involved, we've always agreed completely with the audience. And the top three will have a paid position in this year's festival. And one of the things I want to say, too, is there are always local people who play the festival. Like yes. last year, Roger Sprung, who yes. brought in a lot, a lot of good people with him. Well, we wanted to honor Roger. It yeah. was his 75th birthday. Well, you want to talk about Roger a little? Tell, you know, say who, you know, tell who he is and what he's done? I mean... He, he's a, a nationally touring musician, very well known and loved in the bluegrass community. He's a banjo player. Banjo he's a player. wonderful teacher. He's, he's just got such generosity of spirit. Part um, of the great folk scare of the 60s. That's right, part of the great folk <laughs> scare. Integral yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah, he was part of that. He played, in, he played in Greenwich Village in the Washington Square in actually the late 50s. And he was in Guitar Player Magazine, too, Yeah, in the early 60s. Recordings with Doc Watson. With Doc Watson, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. So um, moving forward, do you want to talk about the festival now? I mean, you know, how, how it's run, the uh, um, Folk Fridays, that, ty that type of thing? Well, that's a, a separate thing. Uh, in addition to the, the one day, now the festival used to be three days. When it was ticketed, we had a Grassy Hill Song Circle on Friday night then the festival all day Saturday, and we had a, a song circle on Sunday that anybody could come and join. Over the last few years, when we went non-ticketed, we brought it down to a one-day festival. The Grassy Hill Song Circle is part of that, and that's sort of our nod to emerging artists. Um, we like to present people that maybe aren't very well known. I go to the Folk Alliance conferences and to a lot of the folk festivals, um, Falcon Ridge and New Bedford, um, 
to, to meet artists who are, are young and emerging, and this is our way of presenting them. Um, the festival incorporates a contra dance. Nice. Bill Fisher is the caller for that. Um, that was new two years ago, and it was so popular that we've continued it. We do have the 80 Vendor Green Expo and food trucks. Um, a big do, you, do you want to talk about the Green Expo? Do you want to t tell them what it is? Well, you know, we've always been an environmental organization. One of the things that people are often very impressed with is how we handle our garbage and trash. We have a whole team of people who make sure that compost goes in the compost bucket and recyclables go in this bucket and pure garbage goes, you know, in the last bucket. And, and people really, it's an education. It's our way of, of letting people know that we do believe in these, in these things. Um, the festival would not run without at least a hundred volunteers. We always well, welcome volunteers. I was going to ask you about that. Do you want to plug? You know, do you want to plug for volunteers? Because c2folk.com. There's a place right on the website. Come where, on, come on. Where yeah. Where you can sign up to be a festival volunteer. We need we need help. We need volunteers. This is put on by a dedicated group of music lovers who believe in doing this. Some of them have been doing it for a very long time, and some of them are new to the fold. A couple other aspects of the festival is... Uh, See, he's not nervous no, now. No, no. I'm just, well, I'm <laughs> sitting here and I'm thinking of it. Uh, the, we have the children's area we yes. have for the kids. With separate musicians separate and entertainers. Musicians. Yeah. And as each of the stage musicians, last year it just we tried it and it just worked out so great. As they would get through performing on the main stage, they would go over into the Green Expo and they would do little sets... Um, in front of the vendors' booths, and the people just loved it. And so there, there really is music everywhere, all day, you know, at the festival. So it's a great community event. Absolutely. That's you know that's the key Absolutely. right there. Um, yesterday, Frank and I were were at Barbara's house going through all of her stuff, and she sort of narrowed it. She caught us. That's right. She heard, she sort of <laughs> she sort of narrowed it all down. She and she brought a scrapbook with her. Do you want to go through some of it or? I just lost it. Where'd it go? Lost it? <laughs> Sorry, I just lost it. All right. Okay. Yeah. I don't really need this. I'm just going to lose okay. that. Okay. Okay. Well, when I became president three years ago, I thought it would be a good project to sort of put together the history. I thought, where has this come from? So I started doing some of the research. This got passed down to me in terrible shape, and I have sort of neatened it up. I was very surprised to find that we had Peter Yarrow in 1994. So there were things happening in the park before the annual festival really got started originally. So here's the 99 one again. Um, there's all kinds of articles and letters and programs and and you brought up before, in addition to the festival, we have a Folk Friday series. So once a month, on a Friday night, in a church on Whitney Avenue, we have a concert series. It's a ticketed concert series. We try to have a nice balance between local people as well as nationally touring artists. So last year, for example, we had Kim and Reggie Harris. We had Freebo. Freebo was Bonnie Raitt's bass player for 13 in the, years. In the He's 70s, now a singer-songwriter. Yeah out on his own. And we also had local people like Goodnight Blue Moon, which is a New Haven-based band. We always have a Connecticut Artist Showcase. So this year it was Sean Taylor and Shannon McMahon from this area. Um, we try to have a blues night every year. We always have a tribute night, which started when a group of women from New York decided to revive Joni Mitchell's Blue CD. Oh, nice. And they took that on the road. And the format for that was they would each sing a cut from the CD, and then there would be a break. And in the second set, they would each sing one of their own songs. So we've continued that tradition. We had a Simon and Garfunkel tribute night with the C, the C, who are Chucky e. Costa and Mira Stanley, and Hannah and Maggie, who had been uh, festival songwriting competition winners. We've had a Beatle night. We've had a Beatle night. This year we have a Linda Ronstadt tribute nice. in May with No Fuss and Feathers, who are the Yayas and Carol Ann Solabello, who was originally part of Red Molly, as well as Karen Oliver. And that's going to be a really fun night. So we've had, you can see, Nancy, Nancy Griffith. Griffith, Sweet Honey in the Rock, Tom Paxton, The Neilds. 
Washboard Slim and the Blue Lights are a local group who've been part of the festival forever. Stacy Phillips, yeah. Paul Howard. Um, They're local too. Stacey we've sponsored, you know, Phil Oaks died way too young, and his his sister Sunny Oaks keeps his memory alive by sponsoring Phil Oaks nights, and she puts together a wonderful group of musicians to sing Phil Oaks songs, and it's that same format. They sing Phil Oaks songs, and then they sing one of their own songs. So we once had a Phil Oaks night with Kim and Reggie Harris, Greg Greenway, Pat Humphreys, Sonia, Tom Prasado Rao, Hugh Blumenfeld, who was a former Connecticut State Troubadour. By the way, we always keep a a spot on our board for the Connecticut State Troubadour. That's so the, Kate Callahan this right year, right? now it's Kate Callahan. She just became State Troubadour. Kristen Graves was our last State Troubadour. Um, so here's, they used this format for a while, you can see, with yeah, this, this poster, 2001. But, you know, here was the Elm City Song Circle Friday night, which was part of that with Louis Collins, the Kennedy, the Kennedys, and Jess Klein. Um, so somebody did a good job, you know, putting all this stuff together and, you know, having, having some evidence of what's happened. So I was busy putting this in more chronological order last night, and I discovered that and these are some of the Folk Fridays. David Roth did a Folk Friday. Um, these are, there were some pictures from who knows when. It was still the Eli Whitney Folk Festival when these pictures were taken. So um, they're obviously vintage. Um, and so Frank and I actually helped you get the, uh, the history together. Uh, yes, we I spent the rest forced, of my evening. We forced you to do yes, it. Yes, putting this together. Yeah. Um, Peggy Seeger, Louis Collins. I mean, these are all people that we've, we've had. We've had Arlo Guthrie more than once, I believe. And here he is, Arlo Guthrie. Um, this is back in, in 2004 and 2005, um, Vance Gilbert. What was interesting is I got to about, and here's the Judy Collins one we saw from 2007, I got to 2008 and I couldn't find anything. I had no programs, I had no posters, I had to go online and find out who we had in 2008 and we had, um, well, we always have Yale's professors of bluegrass, by the way, because the bass player now is the president of Yale. He was the provost. But they're a good band, and we always bring them in. Um, Harry Manx, Ruthie Foster, the Holmes brothers. Yeah, Ruthie um, Foster. Crooked Still, Donna the Buffalo. I mean, Cliff Eberhardt, Joe Crookston. Yeah. You know, these are all people that, you know, had played either the festival or our, our Folk Friday series. But I realized that in 2008, things began to change a little bit because we had social media. And suddenly posters and flyers and handouts weren't so important. We now get, Barrett Communications very generously gives us a billboard on 95, on I-95, for a few weeks before the festival. We're very grateful for that. We have a banner that hangs over Whitney Avenue for a few weeks before the festival. So there are other ways of reaching people. Social media is crucial. It is just key. And we reach a lot of people that way. We do make programs every year. These are some of the more recent you know, festival programs that exist. And the programs always have biographies of all the musicians. We are lucky to have, um, the, have had the same MC since the inception of the festival, Steve Winters, who has the, Saturday, the Friday night radio program, Profiles in Folk, has been our MC forever. And he's does WPKN? WPKN. No, he's SHU. SHU. WSHU Profiles in Folk. Um, and he very generously researches and writes the biographies of all of the musicians for, um, for the catalogs, so for the programs. And we seem to have adopted Bruce Swan as our MC. And Bruce Swan from PKN is our yeah, daytime yeah. MC now, as well as being the MC for Auditions Night on April 1st. So um, I actually found a poster from 2012, so we did still do a poster then, but we haven't done them since. We've done, you know, more like like little cards that sort of have our schedules on it for both the festival and for the Folk Fridays. And we also, you know, take out ads in like the Gray Fox um, Festival brochure and Falcon Ridge Festival and old songs, you know, so that people who are festival goers know that Connecticut Folk Festival and Green Expo is worth coming to as well. Great. Okay, um, I know we're, we're sort of at the end here and I know there was something that you wanted to say, you said some final words you wanted to say about folk music in general, or music in general. 
before we go out? Well, you know, I'm always surprised when I meet people who say they never heard of Connecticut folk. We've been around for a very, very long time. The tradition has continued for many, many years. Um, people love music. People love live music. And being able to hear live music, certainly when we do our Folk Fridays, and it's a listening room, and there's not beer bottles clinking in the background and yes. people shouting, it's a very, very different experience. There are so many good musicians, good songwriters out there who are touring, trying to make a living doing this, and still selling their CDs, and Connecticut Folk wants to give them all the support we can. Great. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Um, we're going to go out with a, uh, a short fi film segment from the Missing 2008 <laughs> Folk Festival, just so that the audience can get sort of an overview of uh, what being at the festival is like. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here on the Endless Highway at the HAN Network. Thank you very much. Dreaming of the ball. Learn to drive